A lot of times we might want to add PHP codes within our HTML. It's easy to add the PHP code, but with loops and conditionals, it can get very messy very soon. Today we are going to talk about three ways to add loops and conditionals within our HTML code and see what are the advantages and disadvantages of each one. Here I have a list of names and I want to echo them here as a list. So I want the final version to look something like this. List and then name one, name two and so on. So I'm going to write a for each loop. So let's first write the for each loop. Let's open a PHP tag and then write for each names as name I want to echo something like what we have seen list and then plus the name and then again list okay this is one way to do it and let's see the result on our browser when I refresh the page, as you can see, I can see all the names. Now, let's go back to our code. This is clean, this is good enough, and this gets us what we need. But with a lot of code editors, with a lot of IDEs, if I echo it like this, I'm not going to get auto-completion from my ID and very soon it's going to get tricky. So here with PHP Storm, I'm lucky enough that they do support HTMLs within our string inside the PHP, but a lot of code editors do not support that. This is the first way and as you have seen, it gets the job done. Now what is the second way to add loops? Well, the second way is to add for each here and then close the PHP tag here and then open it before the last bracket and instead of echo just write list there is no need for this there is no need for this and just for the name part I can open PHP tag again and echo the name and close the tag again so here it would be considered HTML and my code editor would definitely recognize them and help me with auto completion. First of all, let's see if it gets the job done. Yes, it prints all the names. The output is exactly the same, no problem. The only disadvantage that this one had is this part. In my opinion, this part can get very tricky very soon especially if you have a for each here and then if you have some conditional here and then you would have something like this in your code and you have no idea which is for which is it for my loop is it for my conditional for which one is it and it gets really ugly very fast the last one that we are going to see is exactly like this but instead of brackets we use colon here and instead of ending the bracket here we write end for each that's it now we are taking advantage of using the auto completion for the html part we are echoing the name with php commands and here it would be a lot cleaner when I use conditionals within my loop or I have a, another loop within this loop. For example, let's add a conditional here. I want to say if my name is Amir, only then echo it. Here I have this for each and end for each. I have this if and if I want to close it, I write end if. And I expect this code to echo only one name and the name should be Amir. So let's go back to our browser to see. And as you can see, when I refresh the page, it echoes only Amir. 
This is how I write for each and conditional within HTML code. I can use the code editor's code completion because the HTML part is within HTML, it's not within PHP code. So it can easily recognize that. I can use tags like end if and end for each to make it cleaner and more readable. As you have seen, all the three ways will give you the exact results. So in case of result, it, it's exactly the same. It doesn't matter, but it's all about readability and maintenance of the code. The more readable the code is, the better and easier it is to maintain it. That's it for today. Let's continue with our course.